Hi, my name is Jessica and I am a developer advocate at Twitter. Today I'm going to walk you through how I built a bot of actual cats. This bot tweets out facts about cats twice a day and it was built using Python, the managed tweets endpoint, and it is deployed using Google Cloud Platform with Google Cloud Functions and Google Cloud Scheduler. And today I'm going to show you how I built this bot. One of the things I love about Twitter in general is the amount of automated accounts, otherwise known as bots, that are on the platform. There are bots that watch TV. There are bots that help you add alt text images. There are bots that tweet out old roadside pictures. Bots really enrich the Twitter experience and they make Twitter Twitter to me. So, Making bots on the platform is a really great way to get started with programming or the Twitter API in general. Um, one of the things for me that really helped build up my technical confidence as a developer was building a bot. I remember the first time that I was able to make a tweet from my own code. I was like, oh my God, I did it. I made my like code make internet happen without having to deal with servers or anything like that and i was just like really excited to have my code make a tweet happen so your first step is going to want to be to set up the profile that you want for your bot account you'll first want to sign up for a new twitter account if you don't already have one from there you're going to want to upload the images that you want your uh, main profile image and um, the background image. So we have two very cute cats here. And then from here too, um, you're gonna wanna name your bot. You're also um, gonna want to set up your accounts, um, your bot accounts automated account information. So you're gonna wanna say that it's automated by your handle. This account obviously is automated by my handle, at Jessica Garson. And then you're gonna wanna set, set up your bot's profile bio as well. Um, so that's kind of gonna be the first step um, in a series of how you're going to want to get up, go ahead and get started authenticating to your account. To authenticate on behalf of another user, you are going to want to use what's known as a three-legged OAuth flow. For this example, we're going to use OAuth 1.0a to make a request on behalf of a user. And in this case, we're gonna make a request on behalf of my personal handle, at Jessica Garson, to authenticate on behalf of at Factual Cat. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here, and we're inside of a request helper. This just gives you kind of a framework to make requests. And so this is known as a REST client. I like Insomnia. Another great option is Postman as well. So we're just going to make a post request to api.twitter.com slash OAuth slash request token. And then from here we can press send. And then we should have um, an OAuth token inside of our response. And also one thing, since we're going to want to be using pin based OAuth, um, we're going to want to make sure that in our query, OAuth callback is set to OOB. So if you are logged in as your bot account, you can see here that I'm logged in as at factual cat. Um, from here, if we go to upi.twitter.com slash OAuth slash authorize, and then we do a question mark and we have, and we kind of paste the OAuth token that we got back in our response from our last request, we can now get back this OAuth token, paste that in here, and then we could be taken to a website that looks just like this. And so from here, we're going to want to click where it says authorize app and then we get back our pin that we can cut and paste to um, complete the authorization process to um, authenticate my app um, to make requests on behalf of Actional Cat. After you've gone through the authorization flow, you're now ready for the third step. So for this, we're going to make want to make a request to api.twitter.com slash OAuth slash access token. And this will give us all the keys and tokens that we need in our response um, to make a request on behalf of my handle at person to make requests on behalf of a factual cat. You're going to need your OAuth token, which is the same credential that you use for the past few steps. And um, you also are going to want to use the OAuth verifier, which is 86 
10511. That's the same number we got from the last step as well. So this number is the same as the previous step, and then this one is going to be um, also the same as the number that you got from the previous step. And then when you're ready, you want to press send. And then from there, you will get a request of all the information, all the keys and tokens you need, and the body of the request. Inside of Google Cloud Platform, I went ahead and I created a Google Cloud function. So I can actually go in and show you what this looks like. So if I click where it says function one, you can actually see where this is. And then from here, um, if I go in and click edit, um, we can now take a look at the code. So I have actually inside of this runtime build connections and security settings, I set up my environment variables for each of my um, account credentials so that I can actually go ahead and use environment variables mm -hmm. there. And then I have this main Python file um, that has basically everything I need to start making requests in here. So um, from here, I have this import request. I'm using the request package of Python um, and I'm using um, request OAuth lib, their OAuth1 function to authenticate on behalf of my user. And then from here, I actually import OS so I can get my environment variables. Um, and so I did want to select the runtime of Python 3.9 um, and that sort of ensured that I was like being able to write Python code right inside of Google Cloud Platform. So the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to um, get a random fact. Um, so I used catfact.ninja, which is a catfact API, um, and I just basically made a re get request directly to this endpoint and was like, hey, I need this to be no longer than 280 characters. And then from there, I just converted it to JSON and then I return out the fact. Um, and that's how I get a random fact to keep tweeting about. And then from there, I actually um, got to format the fact. So I had to put inside the text and then I actually placed my fact inside there so that I have a JSON object that I could pass in with each request. And then from there, now I get to connect to OAuth. So um, after getting all of my keys and tokens, um, my first two keys and tokens, um, the consumer key and the consumer secret, I get that directly from my own developer portal. And then I get the access token, access token secret through that three-legged flow that we just showed earlier. And then from there, um, I can actually um, call the URL, and this is the managed tweets endpoint. Um, and so then from there, I'm like, hey, I want to get the tweets from this managed tweets. I want to also um, authenticate on behalf of my user. So I used to use this OAuth1 function from the request library. And then I return both those objects from there. And then I have this hello pub sub, and that's sort of like, I think of this as like my main function that ties everything together. It's sort of like, the bow at the end of my code that kind of creates everything. So I take the fact, I format the fact um, inside of the payload, and then from there I get my authentication information and I get my URL. Um, and then from there, I just make a post request and that's what's running the code. So that's sort of like how everything is put together. But we also use um, Google Cloud Scheduler. So if I search for Cloud Scheduler in here, from here, I actually can see the cron job that I'm running. Um, so this is daily cat facts, and you can see the frequency is twice a day. That's every 12 hours. Um, so from here, you can actually um, configure that. I live in the East Coast, so I get to configure it all, and I can also um, change this if I wanted it to only tweet once a day or if I wanted it to tweet every hour, I can actually do that in there. So um, that's a little bit about how everything is built and deployed. There is a tutorial that goes along with this video that walks you through how to create a Twitter bot with V2 of the Twitter API. This is basically a how-to example of how I did everything that is in this video. So it walks you through each step from creating your bot account, to authenticating on behalf of your bot, to posting your first tweet on behalf of your bot, and then setting up the Google Cloud functions. Everything is actually written out for you step by step, and you can adjust it if needed to meet the purpose of your own bot.
Thank you for watching today. Um, it is our hope that this video inspires you to create your own bots on the platform. If you do, please let us know. Um, you can tweet at us at Twitter Dev. If you create any bots that you want to share with us, let us know on the Twitter community forums, twittercommunity.com. Um, that's also the place to go if you run into any troubles or um, have any questions along the way. We're here to help. Um, thanks so much again, um, and we look forward to seeing what you build. Thanks.